welcome to the last episode of the Brush Painting Slaughters Marauders series. I've gone ahead and applied all my stickers, uh, letting the clear coat dry thoroughly for a couple of hours. I know that doesn't sound maybe logical, letting something dry thoroughly for a couple of hours, but uh, we're working with acrylics here. So um, if you're working with enamels, I would suggest overnight. Even acrylics, you could say overnight, but uh, you know, sue me, I'm enthusiastic. And what I've done here is I've taken a few different sticker sets and I've combined them to make this look here and I'll walk you through each one. Uh, let's start with the G.I. Joe emblem. What I love about the shark is that nice long G.I. Joe logo there. I don't know about you, but for me it's having that G.I. Joe logo is just fantastic. Um, and you may wonder why I didn't just use the uh, traditional shark logo and the fact is is that uh, the shark logo is an earlier G.I. Joe logo that doesn't have the black shadowing there and Slaughter's Marauders does so I'll bring it in nice and close and you can see that there so in order to further tie this in I uh, decided to use another vehicle's uh, G.I. Joe sticker in order to get that shadowed uh, G.I. Joe font. Uh, this sticker is actually two stickers combined from the Retaliator set and if you see that set yourself uh, you'll know that it has a curve to the forward edge of each sticker. And what I did is I just took my scissors and cut a perpendicular line to the bottom of the, uh, the stripes there to square it off. And then I just butted the stickers end to end to give me a complete G.I. Joe logo along the nacelle. I put some step and no step stickers on there. Um, if you've never seen those before, they're in a lot of G.I. Joe vehicles, uh, particularly aircraft and those are on real world aircraft and they just tell you where you can and can't put your feet certain things you shouldn't be stepping on and some things you can so i didn't want them stepping on the air intake but they could step here if they were mounting the the vehicle from the water and here if they're mounting it from like the deck of the uss flag or something like that and uh the other thing i noted it was that uh, slaughters and marauders i know they're a ground assault force but in this case i'm giving them some reconnaissance and and uh, close air support capability with this if you will um is I put uh, what I like to call army style stickers on it. Uh, Slaughter's Marauders is all ground vehicles until now. And army vehicles have different national markings than let's say Air Force vehicles do or uh, Navy jets. And those will have the stars and bars. So it's that maple leaf, well, it's not the maple leaf, it's the star with the bars on either side. They call that the stars and bars. But uh, tanks and stuff will just have a star, or in this case, a maple leaf uh, either on its own or with a black circle around it or some color of a circle around it. So because I'm uh, in Canada, I put the Canada sign symbol on there and the maple leaf as well. And those were from uh, the Raider. So this is from the Retaliator and this is from the Raider. Um, the step, no step ones, I think were from the Retaliator as well, but don't quote me on that. And then I've got a just a, a regular uh, Slaughter's Marauders logo sticker here from a sheet of Marauder's logos. And I put some rescue arrows here because they have that for when an airplane goes down. That's where they there's a little hatch there and they pull a lever or something and the canopy flies off, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and of course we have the traditional uh, Cobra victory markings here. Uh, my pilot's a really good one. Of course it's going to be uh, piloted by uh, Slaughter's Marauders Deep Six. And I'll, uh, I think I showed that to you in the last episode. If not, just picture Deep Six but in Slaughter's Marauders color, so it's pretty cool. Uh, I don't have it with me here because I'm actually traveling on the road for work. So uh, I decided to bring this with me, which is another advantage to brush painting is you don't, all you need to do is bring a couple of paint brushes, maybe a cup if you can't find one at your hotel and uh, the paints you need and the clear coats and everything. And you can do this while you're traveling. So just uh, food for thought on that one. And I put a nice big Slaughter's Marauders logo up here. I still have to finish the nose technically. I'm going to do something fancy with that where the grill normally is, but uh, for all intents and purposes, we're going to call this complete anyway. Uh, and I just mirrored the same thing on the other side, mostly mirrored, I should say. What I've got is I've got balance on it. So most of the markings are symmetrical. Um, the G.I. Joe logo is the same thing, again, just reversed. Um, but for example, here in the hinge, I put a danger sign there. Basically, it's, you know, be careful. This is where the canopy hinges, uh, which balances out the Cobra kill markings on the other side. So 
I've mentioned it a couple of times about having uh, balance vice symmetry, and that's another one of those cases. It gives something to catch the eye that is uh, similar but different. Uh, which brings me to uh, another interesting point about Slaughter's Marauders vehicles and something that I like about them visually is that if you look at the camouflage, because we use those very uh, almost like arrowhead shapes or wet, thin wedge shapes to paint the colors on, you'll see the wings are actually different colors. And I really like that. It provides visual interest. Uh, real world camouflage is not symmetrical. And while this gives it balance, it creates visual interest by having your eye notice different things about the colors and it sort of catches you there. And we've got symmetry, or excuse me, we've got balance on either side of the, the nose as well. Like yes, there's the color pattern of dark green brown, light green brown, etc. But they're different sizes of color blocks. So uh, it creates a very really nice uh, visual uh, impact in my opinion. Um, and then I put a couple of, uh, a little bit of uh, blatant patriotism on the bottom there. And then just a couple of warning signs that says a high explosive ordnance load or something like that. Because you can put the torpedoes there or the, or the, the divers themselves or what have you. So uh, that would about sum it up. So what we've got here is a brush painted custom. Um, and what I would say is um, the limitations really are based off of uh, your patience with applying straight, or, or I should say solid lines, not necessarily straight lines. Um, the quality of paint you're using um, and just the time you have. So uh, troubles I've run into doing this sort of thing. Uh, the Tamiya paint gave me some trouble, but uh, I sorted that out uh, with some proprietary thinner. I used that X28 thinner on that. So that, that helped that out. I just wish I had done that earlier in the process. So there's the, uh, the, the warts and all approach of these customs for you. Um, this paint here, the, the red brown color, um, I settled initially for that reddish brown color, but then once I found a, a, my own example of a Slaughter's Marauders vehicle, it was too far off. I think that if you had stayed with the red brown, you would have been fine. But if you're really trying to hone in on those colors, then you're, you're kind of forced to hand mix. Um, when I do these videos, I live in a very small town, uh, so my resources are limited, and it does become uh, annoying to try and find the right color, even online, because the photo of a color online or a color swatch online is not the same as it is in your hand. So be cautious with that. Um, and quite honestly, after a while of maybe hit and miss with colors, buying them online and paying for shipping, um, it becomes uh, a budgetary concern. And in this case, uh, we'll get into a video on mixing color and whatnot later on, but don't be, don't be shy to hand mix. And that's what I had to do here is I had to hand mix that color. And when I held it up against the, uh, the Slaughter's Marauders links, it was like a 99% match. And I put that, I leave out 1% because honestly I was 100% happy with it, but just in case somebody disagrees, it's one of those, yeah, well, okay. You know, maybe from your point of view or the way your brain processes color, it looks different but I was uh, supremely happy with the, with the tone that I got there. Um, and that's really all there is to it. Um, we do need to name this though. Uh, what I looked at with Slaughter's Marauders vehicles is they all have different names because they're technically G.I. Joe vehicles that have some new parts on them. Uh, and then they mostly call them something different. I mean, there's not that many vehicles. They'll, the one that's still the same is the Armadillo, even though they put the new turret with the missiles on it. Um, so I'm calling this one the Slaughter's Marauders Grizzly. Um, I came up with that name because one, it sounds cool. Two, I'm from Canada, so Grizzly Bear, that's really neat. I was going to call it the Beaver, but I don't think anybody would take this thing seriously. Um, and it's a nice name that goes well with uh, the Slaughter's Marauders Lynx. You got the Lynx and the Grizzly. Um, and I couldn't really think of anything to kind of balance that with Equalizer. So I like the animal names for vehicles. A lot of vehicles are named after animals. So uh, this is the Slaughter's Marauders Grizzly. So all that being said, I want to thank you for joining me for this series. Uh, please like and subscribe. And to my subscribers, uh, thank you very much for tagging along on these journeys. Uh, the next one we're going to do is I think we've uh, covered just about everything. I think it's time to dive into airbrushing. So we're going to talk about, uh, we'll do a basic intro to airbrushing. And uh, we will um, talk about basic setups and whatnot. Uh, it may seem a little intimidating at first, especially from a cost perspective. But once we get into it and you realize uh, the versatility of the airbrush and what you can do with it, uh, even on a basic level, I don't mean doing like airbrushed flames on the side of a hot rod or anything like that, which, you know, if you spend the time to learn, you could do. Um, but you just open up your world to a whole other 
uh, realm of possibilities, the paint application becomes uh, technically nicer. And uh, quite honestly, it's just it's my preferred way of doing custom paint. Um, spray paint has its place. Hand brushing certainly has its place. Uh, and with airbrushing, you will have to do touch-ups with a brush. Um, but we'll get more into that later. So. Again, here is the Slaughter's Marauders Grizzly. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope your project is going just as well, if not better than mine did. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them uh, down below there, and we'll see you in the next video. And remember, have fun.